Hello everyone and welcome to another part of Let's Play Eador, Masters of the Broken World on Overlord difficulty. Uh, in the last part we leveled a bit, conquered a new province and if I remember correctly we have a new command promotion so we have one free slot in our army. So let's back into our capital and get a second healer. As you are leveling uh, your commander and getting command promotions uh, to keep the balance uh, of healers and barbarians uh, at the proper level, uh, what I do is when I get a free slot in this line, I uh, buy a barbarian uh, in there. If a slot opens in the second tier, I buy a healer there and uh, buy barbarians for uh, the higher higher lines. Uh, this is only until I have access to higher tier units where this changes but for now this is uh, the way uh, how I will uh, uh, buy uh, my units. We have some crap so we can as well sell it. Uh, this is a bit better so get rid of this and equip this one. Slow we don't need now and we already have one don't need to repair. We can buy another building. So let's buy pop here. And uh, for now I will go for the lizard man. I think uh, we are strong enough to take them out. Then I will try to clear uh, the upper part of the map for some more experiences. And uh, once uh, we are done with that I will move to this part of the map. Try to find the AI and uh, uh, try to win uh, the battle for the shard as fast as possible so we can move uh, forward and see some new buildings and uh, uh, a bit harder uh, harder fights. Let's go for lizard man. So how many is going to be there? Only four. It can be I think up to six so this is relatively easy. Okay, when you get your second healer, as you can see, you, can, you can't fit him into the existing defensive line. So move this Barbarian forward and like this, you still have the defensive line and everything uh, that needs cover is behind it. And let's start. Well, I think I will heal this guy. And move forward a bit. Now the first web will go in here and start cleaning them up. As you can see they are hitting really hard that's why I'm trying to avoid fighting them er early. Uh, without healers this probably is not possible to do uh, without analysis. I will wipe this one. Now this guy should be fine because uh, only one of these will be able to get to him so some of the damage you will get uh, I can heal up. But I'm not gonna move him forward because damage from both of them at the same time would be too high. Okay, now reform the defense a bit. Finish this side. And reposition our healers so they are in reach of units that will be fighting now. I think we can use the heal here. It will be fine. Web here, some damage. And wait. Focus the healing and keep going after this guy to weaken him. And I will start to move with this barb around eventually if it's needed. 
Still a lot of damage, but I think we'll be fine. Heal up, finish him, and keep moving. Okay, auto heals there. Attack with him. Yeah, and now I will be f able to finish him off the last heal and victory. Gonna medal. Uh, I think at this at this point uh, the upkeep is uh, good enough, and especially for this shard, uh, it's fine. Later on. Uh, 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 shards which will be more difficult to conquer I would wait a bit with medals still uh, none of our healers has medals yet but for now I think it will be fine and I expect uh, the battle for this shard to be over quite quickly and first healing medal so how your healers can uh, get this medal during the battle the healer has to heal three times more hit points than, the, than his skill in healing is. In this uh, case uh, the skill is four so to get a chance to get this medal this healer had to heal over 12, uh, 12 hit points. The more uh, uh, hit points you heal the higher the chance to get the medal. And what the medal does, it uh, increases the healing by two, which is quite significant, uh, because uh, without medal healers are, heal are healing for uh, three up to five hit points, so now five to seven is uh, quite, quite a difference. And also it uh, gives them one more uh, ammunition, so they can heal one more, as you can see. Um, in almost every battle I run out of all heals, so this also helps a lot. Of course, a reward. And what we have now? Savage Woods here and the Free Settlement here. Okay, I'll go for a Free Settlement, much easier to conquer. But first I'm gonna build a pub. And uh, if I check my fort... Uh, the only building I will build probably now f uh, on this shard, uh, the only thing I could use will be uh, the stable because it increases uh, the income from horses uh, by plus five. I have uh, horses on one on one in one province, so I can use this and to build it. I need the forge. The forge is not really important for a commander. It needs iron, so it's uh, almost never uh, for 50 gold early in the game, and uh, you don't really need the, the, uh, these items. But if you are playing uh, a barbarian, uh, you will probably go for the forge to get early access to this uh, to this armor. And move to another shard. Uh, okay, that's really weak defense. So I will use this fight to heal up my units. And at the end of this fight, we should be completely healed. We have two tiles of impossible terrain here. So I will keep these guys uh, to handle everything uh, that comes from the uh, from this side and move with this a bit down. And I'll try to get rid of the slinger as fast as possible. Some healing here, finish this guy off, and 
let's wait here. Two barbs should be really enough to handle all of this. As you can see, even when there is last unit, I'm not moving forward. It's just I'm so much used to wait for all units to come, and also I'm lazy moving my armies. Um, okay, no level ups here. Any locations? Okay, archer store, no chance there. Necromancers, uh, possible to beat, but we have still some more uh, provinces to conquer. And it's usually easier than go for locations like like necros. So let's keep going. Here is some redwood, so maybe uh, maybe a tougher defense, orcish tribes. So let's see. And before I forget, let's build another pub. And build that stable I want to buy. Only four, so this will be fast. At this point, uh, for a while, the game is just about uh, finding uh, battles you can handle, leveling as much as you can, and uh, I often just wait until the AI finds me, not rushing. So I will not talk that much about, about what I'm doing. It's really quite easy. Okay, and the battle is over. Level ups, yeah. Uh, this is the most useless uh, combination you can get uh, here. <laughs> Actually, don't don't care. Just click one. Roll the morale. This is much better if you get the choice to pick uh, between a single plus one uh, improvement and plus two almost al always uh, take the plus two another medal I don't want this one see what we have here double on that uh, it should be really easy skeletons and zombies on both of them but uh, I really want to finish the shard so I will just go for some more conquering and I can buy another pop even though I don't need uh, really to buy uh, all these pubs at this moment, uh, I'm usually trying to do that because it helps me uh, later not to forget to do it when I when I need it. Just the practice of for my memory. Brigand thief and bowman. So again, nothing difficult. Only one woman, so again, just quickly finish this. Some healing before I move forward and start killing them. Web here and the turn. Some more range damage, and you see, throwing knife anytime you can. Finish here. 
Um, Vat the Brigand. And keep going. Again, if uh, this shard was a bit more difficult, I would move uh, my healers with the army uh, and try to use uh, the healing to get a chance for the medal. But now uh, I'm just trying to go as fast as possible. Can't move with these guys, so at least throw at them and finish them off. Come on, level ups here, it's stamina, uh, some more hit points at this point. Uh, the first aid can be quite useful, uh, so all the minor damage you get is healed, healed automatically, but uh, lower levels I still prefer uh, just pure survivability from hit points. Now what else? Savage Woods, Elves, okay, I will skip these because uh, I can conquer them, I have the army for that, but uh, it's a different race uh, of, uh, of uh, inhabitants in those provinces and uh, if you conquer them, uh, they are usually uh, really mad about that, so if I can, I just skip these provinces and go around. I can go for the free settlement here, so just quickly move there. Keep building. Oh, come on. And go, go. More pops. Those pups are really not that good at improving income, but because they will, be, they will be the only thing we will have for a while in the campaign. Uh, I will take the one extra gold. Every bit counts. Okay, again, nothing difficult here. Wait for melee, and then finish the range. This is why you don't want to lose your barbarians. As you can see, these fights are becoming super easy now. But if I allowed my units to die, uh, the difficulty of those fights would be still the same. And uh, later, when you are facing uh, much stronger armies, uh, the, the experience and extra power from levels on your unit uh, units make the difference in those fights. Properly leveled uh, uh, army of healers and barbarians can take out significantly stronger armies. Uh, in my last uh, playthrough in the campaign, uh, on one of the first shards, uh, I encountered AI that uh, managed to find a contract for labyrinth guards and placed those in his capital so I had to fight them uh, these level 14 minotaurs only with, with my barbarians and healers and I still managed to get through this so they can become really really strong Keep building another free settlement, so it's really easy to go through. And I hope the AI, AI will be somewhere down here.
Also, watch out for uh, for spearmen. Um, just check them if they have or don't have uh, this one uh, point of ammunition. They can throw their spear once, and it can uh, sometimes happen that they get close, throw the spear, and kill your healer with that. So just keep an eye on them. Okay, and another battle is over. More hit points, of course. From this, always go for more healing. The best promotion you can get for your healers. Uh, here, uh, I would usually go for uh, the iron because I don't have that resource yet. But here, I just want to finish, so I will go in the middle to see the most of the map by only conquering one province. see okay Come on, come on, faster. Oh, that was a misclick, I didn't want to move him. So I guess I will move uh, yours a bit, so this guy can't reach them. And move back. heal up to be ready for a next fight. Uh, always try to end the fight uh, healed as much as possible so you are prepared for the next battle as uh, good as you possibly can. You never know what will be the battle you will be forced to fight and uh, you don't want to waste uh, unnecessary uh, turns uh, just by waiting for units to heal up. Another command. <coughs> Sorry for this. Uh, let's see. Range we don't need at all. Maneuvering uh, some initiative and stamina. Uh, I usually uh, ignore this one. Uh, the stamina bonus is not that high and uh, you can get extra stamina just by leveling your units. And the initiative well, can be useful that you are going first but uh, I think that uh, that's more useful uh, initiative is more useful for uh, heroes like uh, scout who can really use the first uh, uh, move to kill uh, some weaker units uh, before they have even chance to move. Uh, now I'll take some extra hit points. And here we have our AI. Okay, how are you doing, bro? Well, seems like you are doing pretty terrible. Uh, this can happen on uh, the first chart because if you see here, uh, we are playing on Overlord, but that's the difficulty of the map of those ne neutral units uh, on the map. But the uh, level, uh, difficulty level of the AI is only skilled at this moment. It will uh, go up quite fast uh, and I think uh, this is a good um, thing from developers to do it like this because 
when you are starting this difficulty, you really uh, need some time to get used to, uh, to the difficulty of the map before you engage Overlord uh, difficulty AI. If you were forced to fight uh, Overlord difficulty map and Overlord difficulty AI, it would be really easy for the AI to overrun you because uh, especially on small shards the pace at which uh, the AI is conquering provinces is really high but now I think they don't even have any uh, any guard in their in their capital so uh, let's see how uh, high um, how much leveled uh, the scout is and I hope uh, we'll be able to finish uh, this off really easy. I've noticed one thing, uh, people in our province are about to price. Let's check how long it will take them. Um, okay, it will be next turn, so let's see if I have anything to hire here. And I can hire adventurers, so I will use them and they will suppress the rebellion. Sometimes you can use rebelling provinces to uh, level your hero. If you get in really bad situation on the map where um, you don't have enough good locations and uh, uh, provinces to conquer to level your hero, what you can do is to plunder one or two of your provinces a bit more, let the population go crazy and then just keep moving between them, suppressing those rebellions uh, and getting experience from that. Uh, I don't. I'm not saying that's the way how to how to play uh, Overlord, uh, but sometimes you are forced to take uh, such such actions just to keep going. Uh, it happened to me once that there was uh, no way for me to break out uh, of the first ring. I didn't have uh, locations where to go. Uh, the exploring, just exploring, would take, would take too long for me. So what I did was I plundered two provinces, always stood in one. Uh, I uh, was exploring that province, waited until they... Uh, rebelled against me, suppressed the rebellion, moved to the another one, uh, explored it for a bit, again waited for the rebellion, get some more experiences and like this I was able to level my hero and break through the first ring. Well, now just quickly finish the battle. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, he managed to get some some defenses in here. Uh, ten of them, but it should be fine. It will just take a bit longer. Let's see how they're positioned uh, and how the map, map looks like. Okay, this is really good. We have a line of impossible terrain here. Uh, down is only one tile uh, through uh, which they can move. This here is the same. Or maybe this tile, is it? Yeah, it's a forest. So they can move through these two tiles here. So they won't be able to come all at the same time. So we will be just taking them down one by one. Heal up. Web and move forward so it's faster. Oof. I'm not gonna move my healers because I don't want them to get in range of those slingers. Yeah, well, they will go forward anyway. So let's see. Heal. Here a bit, here, throw axes, and I'll let them come again. This is even better, you can see that those uh, slingers blocked the path for those units, so even less can come at the same time. Now he's in range, so let's finish him off, move forward to block this access, and... Yeah, 
But more of them come. As you can see, the hit point amount of hit points on these units uh, is lower than on those which were on uh, neutral uh, provinces. This is because they count as a part of uh, the AI, so they are not uh, overlord difficulty units. They are just uh, uh, scaled to the skilled level, so they are easier uh, to to kill. It's always like that. Anything owned by the AI will be on the same level as the AI. Poof. And last two shots here. Okay, that will be some more experiences. Nice. Uh, more HP. Okay, take the medal. Here, I will probably go for the counter attack another metal nice and what's here scout and three pikemen well he's like level two or three maybe so the AI was just sitting here all the time well, I don't like the position of the scout standing on the hill his range is quite long so he will be able to shoot f uh, without moving. But at least he is not in the range uh, of our healers. If he was, I would have to probably keep him wept uh, until I uh, kill those pikemen. Like this, he will just keep shooting the barbarian until he runs out of ammunition and I can heal through this really easily. Okay, and let's move forward. As you can see, I'm using the web fairly extensively. Uh, I, almost in each fight, I use all webs I have access to. It's because uh, I have enough crystals to do that, and uh, I want to avoid all unnecessary damage I possibly can. Uh, so I'm always uh, almost uh, full hit points before I uh, when I uh, finish the, uh, the battle and I'm prepared uh, for the next turn and let's just finish the scout and he doesn't have any ammunition left so he has to go melee and Low level scouts are really not good at uh, hitting your troops from melee. He was only level 1. Uh, here the defense and uh, begin a siege. It will take a while to finish the siege because we have only a few units. The more units you have in your army, the higher level and higher tier they are, the faster those sieges go. Some units even have uh, extra uh, bonus to siege. And keep going. What do we have? Alchemist found the deposit of dead crystals. Uh, excellent source of magic energy, but they are toxic. So what we want to do? Either send volunteers. People would go mad if I do this, and it would. I think it can even lower uh, your population in the province. We can create a golem and uh, or our order our people to do this. Um, I usually just go for I can't risk the health of subjects because um, uh, I have enough crystals. If I needed those crystals I would probably send volunteers there. If you choose to go for the golem uh, the, the, this event uh, will not end just by sending the golem and I think you will have to still invest a bit more uh, after this choice. So by doing this uh, it's just less uh, less expensive to, to get what you want. 
Uh, when I'm saying this, uh, I should uh, also tell you that it's a good thing to learn uh, outcomes of your decisions to each event, so uh, you know uh, what's gonna happen uh, and what all options are in those uh, uh, in those events, so uh, you can get. Uh, what you want from them, like this. I will just take the bonus to uh, to my karma, and we have a rebellion here, so they're going to pay for that, of course. And okay, uh, adventurers are really uh, strong uh, and cheap defense, so no problems uh, defeating this. And keep going. Three more turns. And we have a statue here. Um, statue of ancient uh, god of luck has appeared in the middle of the city. Uh, this is a very good sign, and people are celebrating. So I can pay for some festival for them, or I can uh, break the statue, or just ignore the event and say uh, these things are superstitions. What I almost always go after is to break the statue. Uh, quite often uh, you will get uh, really strong items from this, so it's worth doing it. And the risk is not that high by doing it. This is usually quite good even. Yeah, and as you can see, Astral Boots, uh, this is usable by all classes, even for a wizard plus 4 hit points, uh, plus 5 for jam income. Uh, worth 300 gold and 40 gems, so you can see this is quite quite good item just by breaking a statue. I recommend just break the statue if you can. I knew it. Keep going, almost there. Dwarves put a large amount of iron on the market and price decreased. Okay, this could be useful. Uh, on another shard, I see, for now we don't need it, and let's go, continue, come on, one more turn, and assault, you can still keep sieging even if there is option to, to assault, uh, later in the campaign when, uh, wow, one defender, uh, when uh, you and AI have access to uh, higher tier buildings, uh, it's possible that uh, the AI will have a fort of higher tier, which means that uh, there will be defensive buildings which will be able to shoot at you. If you keep sieging, uh, you will be destroying these buildings up to the point where there will be no wall left and all those buildings will be down, so uh, sometimes it's a good idea to do that. Okay, last web. And that's it! Victory on this shard is ours! Excellent! So let's check our bonuses here. Bandit Slayer, more income, lowers population, uh, lowers population mood. I'm not usually using this building. I don't like the decrease of the mood because usually, as you can see uh, uh, in this video, I already had some problems with mood, so I don't want to lower it even more. Though sometimes you just have to do it for the extra income. Uh, brewery improves mood. Now that's much better. Uh, the morale of the garrison is not that important. Uh, this is what we came f uh, for, so. Finally, crystal craft shop reduces the cost of armor equipment by 10%. This uh, sounds good, but actually it's not that important uh, right now uh, because, uh, well, if you have uh, your barbarian hired for 30 gold or 27 gold, there is no difference. But later in the game, uh, when you have access to higher tier units, uh, they are quite expensive, and these buildings can come in handy. Uh, Driver's guild. Mm. Increases movement from capital province, that's nice. Uh, upgrade granar granary to stable. Uh, this is nice, especially if you have access to provinces with horses, because stable uh, 
can increase income from horses. Uh, granary and stable are buildings uh, not you can't build in your um, in your fort. Those are uh, province improvements you can build on the map and reduces upkeep in garrison. That's not that important. Uh, Foresters Guild uh, income from forest provinces that is nice on on shards heavy on forests and Foresters Guard uh, well just another option for guard for provinces but uh, I'm usually not using them unless I really have to chieftain stand Alawu uh, you the access tribe guard they are a bit better so good that we have an option uh, for some other guard. Here what we have uh, plus three gem reserve. This benefit is something we can pay for uh, when we are starting a, a battle for a shard before we enter uh, enter this map uh, from from the astral. Uh, the gem reserve is not that important. Uh, what you want to get uh, is bonus to your gold income and in and starting amount of gold points gained. Uh, 323. Let's check statistics so I can talk about it uh, a bit. After each uh, uh, battle for a shard, you can check uh, this uh, uh, these statistics uh, here. You will have points uh, from your decisions and things that are here. Number of opponents uh, which were on the map. Uh, amount of uh, of opponents you have defeated yourself, uh, victories, uh, defeats. That's quite obvious. Amount of provinces you own, amount of heroes you own, veteran units. Uh, this will be some extra points for every unit above level ten. Building in stronghold, obvious. Treasures found. Uh, this is a bonus if you find items of uh, either rare, very rare, or legendary quality. We didn't found any on this map. Quest completed. Uh, again, obvious. You get quests from from crystal or sometimes from provinces. You can take quests. Rewards. Uh, this uh, is from these rewards. I will talk about it in a second. Uh, personality. This depends on how, uh, on what kind of decisions you are taking. So, if you're inclined to uh, one side, uh, it's better because you just kept uh, on one side. Uh, in this uh, case, I've been taking some good and some bad decisions, so I really didn't have any um, side uh, I've been standing on. So, my personality is only one. Here the bonus, the faster you can take uh, the shard, uh, the more you will have uh, as a bonus here. If it takes too long for you, this will lower uh, the final bonus. Difficulty level, this is not a bonus for the difficulty of the neutral units, which in this case was Overlord, but a bonus for the difficulty of the AI you were fighting, which in this case was skilled. So this will go up uh, really fast and of course for victory 100% if you lose uh, you don't get anything. And uh, now to these re rewards, this is just bonus to your score, nothing else. Uh, the tactician you can get if you I'm not completely sure about this, but I think it's if you win a, uh, a shard without losing a unit and strategist is uh, when you win without uh, losing a battle. So we didn't lose a unit and a battle, so we have both of them. And now uh, here as you can see the name Overlord of Words, Akredon Dishonest, this is my nickname in the electronic world. Um, you will get this uh, name depending uh, how you were behaving during the fight. Uh, the dishonest I got because of my decisions I was taking during uh, during the fight. You know, going uh, both evil and good. Uh, personality only one, so this is why I have the dishonest. Okay, and let's get back to the Astral and see you.
which shard we will go after next. I will stop the video here. I will probably have to do some talking to Zar uh, off cam. Yeah, here he is. Um, so I will talk to him off, off, off camera. There is really nothing that interesting in this, uh, especially from the start. And I really don't want to reveal too much from the story for people who will be playing the campaign. So for the next time, uh, we will check these shards. We have our first master here. Uh, so, yeah. See you next time. And I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.